who is this vampire to you? He's... he's your king. It was really interesting shooting that scene. In the script, it's described as a big knockout drag out and everything in the house gets smashed. And, you know, it's really, a, you know, a major thing, especially because they're both very powerful vampires. Eric especially, he's so old. These two vampires who would destroy the walls. I mean, everything would truly come down if they really had a fight are in this sequence. But you can't wreck anything. Every single piece of furniture on the set is a one of a kind piece because, of course, you know, these are all found in like salvage yards to look like they come from that part of the world. It was challenging and we really had to think about, first of all, the fight de-escalated from where we maybe pictured it originally. And then there was a decision that was made that, in fact, it wasn't so much about the fight. The fight wasn't that important in terms of um, the enjoyment of the show and the narrative uh, significance of things. And it really became more about, you know, the feelings and the emotions of it. If you ever loved me, you won't hurt him. In this episode, a lot of people are channeling other people. It, it's always nice when there's a big contrast between the, the characters as we know them, and then once they get inhabited by some other persona, they become something completely different. So for the actors, it's a great opportunity. They get to show two completely different things. This was one of the most fun things in the episode for me, I think, was Sam Trammell channeling Tommy. It was interesting beforehand in our discussions about how he was gonna do that exactly, because we weren't gonna do anything physical to make that happen. It all had to be internal. Hey, Jimmy! Table eight's got no setups. Come on, this ain't rocket science. <laughs> it's a great acting challenge, I think, and Sam was so up to it. And I, we all enjoyed his performance so much. I mean, every time we did a take, as soon as we'd stop, everybody would burst out laughing because he actually captured Tommy so well. It was all the way through his body, just to even watch the way he moves or walks. And like, his walk is one of one of my favorite things that, that he's doing. It's so different than Sam Merlot. I can tell that he'd spent a lot of time um, watching Tommy and sort of working on the voice and the body and he really he really stepped up. <gasps> There's a scene at the uh, towards the end of the episode where Lafayette discovers that he is actually a medium and uh, it's Don Bartolo who shows him what he really is. Te demoraste bastante. Pensé que se te olvidó todo lo que te enseñé. The whole sequence is very interesting with Jesus getting bitten by a snake and Lafayette having to channel this character, Tio Luca, um, and that's how he ends up being able to, uh, to cure Jesus. It was a great challenge, I think, for Nelson to kind of to take on this completely different persona and to speak Spanish, which is something that he doesn't do, in fact. And he worked really, really, really hard at it. It's really fun, for I think, to see Lafayette, who was so recognizable in his own way, kind of take on a completely different thing. We were talking about it, Jeremy Pedeswa and I, and we were saying probably we'll never get the opportunity again to shoot zombie vampire priests on fire. And maybe that's a good thing. <laughs> From a production point of view, it's a very big thing, and uh, lots of special effects and visual effects and stunts and all that stuff. It's very challenging to work with fire. Once you light people on fire, you have about 10 seconds to film, and you can't really do it again. It's all this buildup and preparation for hours and hours and weeks, frankly, of figuring out how you're gonna do it, and then it's over in 10 seconds. In terms of is the story part, I mean, I think the scariest thing we could ever do to vampires is take away their free will. It's it's terrifying, which is why witches are a great threat. You know, they may look like middle-aged women with beaded curtains and, you know, a lot of incense, but, but they're deadly. For Marnie, this sort of meek woman who's kind of, you know, uncomfortable, deeply uncomfortable in her own skin and with her own purpose in the world, and suddenly she's embodied by this great force. I mean, it's, for, for that character, it's everything she's ever hoped or dreamed of, and I think, you, you know, Fiona's bringing that to the part. Fiona Shaw is just such an amazing actress. Um, she's really a genius, I think, and, um, you know, she, it, it takes very little for her to, to indicate what's happened to her, and uh, you know right away that she's possessed by some other spirit in the way that she carries herself, and the small vocal inflections and things that she does, and she's suddenly Antonia. Ha, 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 ha.